So here's another piecewise defined function. We're going to ask the same four questions about this one that we asked for the first example. Um, here's a sort of poorly drawn sketch. This should be, so it's a straight line, right? It's the straight line 2 minus x from 0 to 1. And from 1 to 2, it's a parabola. So there's a bit of curvature here. Maybe not as much as there should be. Should be more. More like that, perhaps. Okay. So there's, there's our function in this case. Okay. So again, we could ask, what is the, what is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x? And so to determine the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, we have to come up to our function. We say, OK, 1 from the left means x is a little bit less than 1. x is less than 1. We see it here. So we need to use the expression 2 minus x. And just like in the last example, right, the, the whole role of the one-sided limit here is, is in telling us which of these two expressions to choose. Having chosen the expression, we evaluate as usual, 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. Okay. For the right-hand limit, x is a little bit bigger than 1. So we choose the second of the two expressions, right? We, if x is bigger than 1, we take x minus 2 squared. So that gives me minus 1 squared, which is 1. Okay. Part C, what about the overall limit? Well, in this case, the two one-sided limits agree, right? You can see that we don't have that jump between between the y values on either side, right? We're approaching the same value from either direction. So that means that the limit does exist. And it's equal to the common value of the one-sided limits, right? So it's equal to 1. If we want to give a, a brief reason, we might say, you know, the one-sided limits agree. Okay. Now, um, one thing that does change in this example, if we go to evaluate f of 1, you'll notice that it's not defined. We look here at the x values that are being considered, right? So the domain for this function is x between 0 and 1 and x between 1 and 2. But there's nowhere here where we're allowing for x equal to 1, right? And, and since we didn't put an equal in there anywhere, we just have to say that f of 1 is is not defined, All right? Because there, we weren't given a value for f at one. If if we had say x less than or x you know greater than or equal to one here, if there was the equal sign, then we could use this. If we have the equal sign here, we could use that. Because those are missing, we have to leave it at that. Again, uh, we could also ask what's going on at zero and at two. Um, f of 0 is not defined either, neither is f of 2. Once again, um, at 0, we can only talk about the right-hand limit because values less than 0 are not in the domain. At, at 2, we can only talk about the left-hand limit because we can't look at x values bigger than 2. They're not in the domain. So we can only look at one-sided limits at the ends of the domain.